Hey, what's up everybody? It's Brian here with another tutorial. We're going to dive back into After Effects and we're going to start exploring the basics. I'm going to teach you guys the UI and we're going to do this simple shot right here. Alright guys, so here we are, we're in After Effects now, if we when you open up After Effects for the first time ever, it's going to look something like this, maybe not 100%, maybe you have some extra windows and things like that. Just like in all other Adobe software, you can make modifications to your UI by clicking, dragging up and down on the edges, you can even close panels, you can add panels, you can click and drag them around, you can lock them so you don't accidentally do that. So this is my standard UI, this is very close to what you'll see when you open for the first time. Over here to the left, you have your project window. I also have my effect controls. And then I have my footage and my composition window here. This is where I'll, everything will show up when I'm making changes and the actual footage. This is how I see what I'm doing. Over here to the right, you have your info and audio. I have my audio panel up because sometimes I make audio changes in After Effects, but to be honest, nine out of 10 times, I finish my audio in another software like Audition or Reaper. Over here, I have my effects and presets. I actually don't use this very often, and you'll see why in a few. And if you've been with me through all my tutorials, you'll understand. I have my character window. Now, if you ever have more tabs in a group and they don't all fit, you'll get these double arrows on the side and the other tabs will show up here. So here is the effects and presets in the character. Same thing down here. You'll notice I have a line, tracker, and paragraph. I use the align tool a lot, especially with my text. Uh, I use my tracker all the time as a VFX artist. And here's my paragraph tool, you know, works with my character. And he, down here is my timeline. You'll have your layer palette here and then your timeline controls. To the bottom left, very key, you can expand information about your layers from like, you know, transfer controls to time controls. So just take note of this. This is where these are. Uh, and let's go to get started real quick. Now, my first tip always with all artists out there is stay organized. If you've watched my Premiere tutorials, much the same thing. My filing system is the exact same way. So I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna type in zero, double zero, and I'm gonna hit render. Do another folder, click it, zero one. We're gonna call this one comp. Zero two, call this one footage. Zero three, call this one audio. Zero four, miscellaneous. And then we're going to add a fifth one here called, or a sixth one actually, uh, pre comp, the 05 pre comp. Okay. Pre comps is where um, compositions will rest that aren't the final comps. Okay. Now I want to bring in some footage here. Um, I'm going to double click. I'm already in that window. But uh, if you double click into your project area, you can come in and import. I'm going to hold down the shift key and highlight all of this DGI footage that I shot recently. I'm going to drag them down to a new folder. I'm going to call that DGI. Then I'm going to drag that folder into footage. Now, to create a new composition, you can come down here and hit Create New Composition. You come up to Composition, hit New Composition. Or in our case, what I'm going to do is I have this footage here that I want to use of Eric, my elf. We shot this recently for promo. Right, and I figured this would be a good process to share with you guys. It's a very simple tutorial. We just wanted this cheesy, Bigfoot-esque security camera. Uh, he's dressed up as the character Elf. If you've never seen the movie, it's a Wolf Ferrell movie. I highly encourage it, especially it's the season. So we're going to just drag this footage here over the Create New uh, Comp icon, and it'll create a new composition with this footage. Let's drag this up to Comp. Now, I want to right-click it and go to Composition Settings. Because I shot this with my drone, in the composition settings window, you'll notice that we're in Ultra HD or 4K, 24 frames a second. I don't wanna output that, it's not needed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in 1920 by 1080. This is full HD. We're gonna leave it as 24 frames a second, but I don't need 11 seconds of footage. So we're just gonna come over here. We're gonna type in 05 for five seconds and 00 for zero frames. Okay, background color is fine. Let's rename this and we're gonna call this Elf Security Cam. There it is. There's some extra footage here on the A end. So let's drag this out to where he starts to walk right there. And then I'm going to hold down the Alt Open Bracket key. And that's going to trim my footage to my playhead. 
Okay. Very important. You learn your hotkeys. I will always use a hotkey, so I'll share what hotkeys I'm using. Uh, and you can write them down or, you know, and, and just learn how they work. But yeah, so alt open bracket to trim the footage here. If you don't use a hotkey. The only way to do it is to drag your footage over like that. I'm just going to drag the footage over itself at the very beginning or drag my playhead over and now just use the open bracket key by itself and it'll bring the start of my footage over, bring the endpoint over. So here we are, we have this footage now. And as always, I want to work procedurally, but I also want to save my base layer. So we're going to duplicate the footage by holding control D for duplicate. I'm going to hide. I'm going to hit the shy icon up here and then I'm going to shy the layer away. Now I'm going to pre-compose the footage. I'm going to hit control shift C and it's going to bring this up or you can right click and just hit pre-compose. We're going to move all attributes, adjust the composition duration, make sure that's clicked. And we're going to call this footage. So now we have our footage and let's go and start applying effects. I'm going to drag this to pre-comp so I stay organized. Before I get started, I want to share with you guys one really, really useful plugin. It's a free plugin from Video Copilot. I'm linking it in the description right now. It's called FX Console. What FX Console allows me to do is click on my layer, and then I just hold the control and hit my space bar, and it'll bring up a search menu where I can type in any effect I want. Key light. Uh, in this case, I actually want to use tint. So I'll bring up tint. I'll click on tint, and it adds it to my layer. Yes, I have my effects presets up here, but... This is a much more cleaner, much efficient way to do it. So I highly recommend this tool for you guys. So, all right, so we have our tent here. I also wanna add a curves tool. And in the curves tool, I want to darken the plate by clipping the blacks down and my whites. I'm gonna create some more contrast there. Security camera footage is definitely not as flat as drone footage. So this drone footage comes in as really flat. Um, so it has a lot of range to work with. So I really wanna increase the contrast, but I wanted to darken it overall. That might be too dark. And so now we have a nice black and white footage and we're getting there, but the footage looks too good for security camera footage. So let's go ahead and come down to the footage layer and let's duplicate it on the top layer. I'm going to name it footage dark. And on the bottom layer, I'm going to name it footage white on the top layer, the dark layer. I'm going to go ahead and add another curves on this curves. I want to darken this up big time. So, like so. Right. Then I'm going to add a transitional effect called Venetian blinds. Okay. Now the Venetian blinds, I'm just going to do the transition completion. We're going to type in 33. And then this is the wrong direction. So I'm going to type in 90 degrees so that it's, so it's horizontal like this. Now it's still, it's a little bit too dark. So what I want to do is I want to go to the opacity and I want to lower the opacity by about 50%. And now we have this interlaced look effect that you find on some security cameras but it's not necessarily working to the effect that we want because it's very stationary. So let's just add a little bit of noise essentially to an animation. What this is gonna do is gonna give it that look that it actually looks like a very distorted security camera feed that's not pure, that you don't need to be pure. So to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here to the transition completion. I'm gonna hold down the Alt or Option key on Mac Click on the stopwatch, it's gonna bring this up and this is your expression editor. And since we're at 33%, this is gonna allow me to make modifications to add 33% and I'm gonna use a random number generating tool called the wiggle tool. If you're not familiar with it, it's simply this, you just type in wiggle, parentheses, inside the parentheses, the first parameter is gonna be your amplitude or your frequency in this case, those are two different things I know, but it, it's the amount of times per second that this change is gonna happen. We're gonna type in 15, so 15 times a second. And then for the next one, which is going to be the magnitude of the change, we're just going to type in simply two. Okay. And then I'm going to close off this entire expression with just a semicolon then click on some random gray area with nothing happening. And it's hard to notice the change, but now we have this alteration happening. If I zoom in, you guys will see it. Very little alteration. I just want to see that little noise to happen on the, on that edge. Okay. We can add more uh, effects to this here in a few, but let's go ahead and zoom back out by hitting fit up to 100%. Let's go ahead and add a new layer. We could do that by right clicking, hitting new adjustment layer. That's what we want to add. Or you come up here to layer new adjustment layer, or you can use your hockey control alt Y. On this one, I'm going to add grain. So it's going to hit control space bar. I'm going to click on add grain. Now, when you use the add grain tool to save on CPU and rendering times, they default it to preview. We don't need it. So I'm going to go to final output and I want to use 
one of the codec ones that just adds a lot of noise. I'm just going to use a preset here. It doesn't need to be fancy. There we go. Don't necessarily like the color. So after the color, I'm just literally going to do a tint rather than using the parameters inside. So it goes to black and white. Okay, let's hide that now because it does increase a lot of processing time to our computer. So just to save space, we don't need it. I'll bring it back at the very end. So let's go ahead and add another layer. This time we're going to add a new shape layer. What a shape layer is, it allowed me to add shapes to my layer. I'm going to come up here and hit Q or I'm going to go to my rectangle tool and I'm just going to draw a rectangle as best as I can, about as even to the plate as I can. And what we're going to do is we're going to create some crosshairs now. So one of the cool things about shape layers is it gives us parameters that you won't find in like a solid layer or your footage layers. So let's come to our shape layer. We're going to call this crosshair. And I'm going to just delete the fill. I don't need it. On the stroke, I'm going to drop the spinner down up to white. I'm going to increase the stroke to, in this case, let's say three. Cool. So now we have this box that goes around. But I want to break up this box in a way. Now, there's a couple ways to do this. The cleanest way to do this is just to create a new layer solid above your shape layer. Color doesn't matter, but in this case, I'm just going to do black. Okay. Hide that layer for now. And then I am going to use the rectangle tool again with that layer highlighted. And I'm just going to draw a rectangle there. And I'm going to draw another rectangle here. And then with the transfer controls opened up, it'll be blue down here. You have this option called track mat. With that layer, and we'll call it mat above the crosshair, I can hit alpha inverted mat. And then there we go. So what's happening here is it's taking the information of the layer in front of, in this case, this layer right here that I just used and I just created the boxes on to drive alpha information and transparency information on the layer below it. That's what track matting is. And that's how I get the crosshairs up here. Again, simple, clean, especially if you're just starting off in After Effects, this is built just for you. The next thing I want to do is I want to add that record text down here. So let's right click new text layer. And I'm just going to type in REC for record. The fonts I'm using is Bebis new bold. I also have my Fox bold on and all caps on as well. Okay. Let's go ahead and shrink this down a little bit in the font panel and the character with the layer highlighted. Come back to character. I'm going to shrink this down to 66. Doesn't need to be that big. And then I come up here, hit my move tool or V as the hotkey. Let's zoom in. So this is easier to do. Fit. And I'm just going to drag this over here. Now, I want to also add that red dot and I want that red dot to blink. Okay, so let's make that now. And I'm going to create, so let's come over here, right click new, and I'm going to create another shape layer. And this time, instead of a square, I'm going to make an ellipse. I'm going to hold down the alt key and just draw a circle. When you hold down the alt or option key, it's going to draw a perfect circle for you. So I'll just do that. It's a little bit too big, but we're going to modify here in a few. Come down to the ellipse. Let's turn off the stroke. We don't need it. And then on the fill, I want to use the same color as the red. So what I can do is I can just come over here and just use the eyedropper and click here and it'll bring up that red. So one of the cool things about the eyedropper in After Effects is I can click anywhere. It doesn't have to be on the composition. I can use this red. I can use this blue. Okay. But since I know this red is our text red, I'm going to use that one. Okay. Uh, for the path size, I think it's a little bit too big. So what I want to do here is come over here to the transform ellipse on the scale and I want to lower this to let's say 66%. Okay. The numbers here, if you're copying and following along, are not going to work for you because I hand drew the ellipse. It is highly unlikely you're going to draw the ellipse the same size as me. Now, when I move the text, I use the V key for move or selection tool. In this case, we're not going to do that. I want to show you guys something that you can actually make transforms using numbers. So on the shape layer, let's name it record dot. By the way, the way I rename, I just click on the layers and I hit the enter key and then you can type. I'm going to hit the P key with the layer highlighted and it's going to bring up position. And now I'm just going to use the position by clicking and dragging. And we're going to drop it into place. There we go. We now have the record where we want it. One thing I want to do is I'm going to come down here and also name this layer noise. I want to duplicate this layer because we're going to add even more noise. And on this one, I want to turn off tint. We have noise to record. Now we have two noise. 
really, really grainy. Turn them both off because we don't need them. Now, I want to have this record icon blinking. Not the record, but just the circle. But to do that, let's go to our shape layer. And we're going to pre-compose using Control shift c Call this rec dot. Adjust composition duration. And move all attributes to the new composition. This way, I can make changes to the circle. And whatever changes I make right now are going to be reflected. Clean up our... Stay organized up here, so I'm moving that to the pre-comp. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the T key. And I'm going to set an opacity of 100% on the first frame. I'm just going to hit the stop watch. I'll set the keyframe for us. So if you want to step through frames, you can hold on your control key and just forward or backwards arrow. So what I'll do is I'm going to hold on the control key and I'm going to go forward five frames. One, two, three, four, five. Let's set this to zero and it'll automatically set the keyframe because my stopwatch is on. And then I'm going to go forward five frames again. So one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to bring it all the way back. And then I'm going to hold down Alt and my closed bracket key to close the comp. So now we have a blink. Okay. I'm going to highlight all the layers. I'm going to hit the F9 key, function 9, and it's going to smooth these out. This is the ease in or ease out for Premiere. It's just a hotkey here. We have more controls over it, of course. We can come in here and control the speeds with the graph editor, but we're not going to do that in this tutorial. We'll do that in another. And then what I want to do next is I want to come here and I want to right click, pre compose or control shift C. I'm going to call this rec dot blink. We're going to move all attributes and then we're going to adjust the composition to the duration. When we do that, you'll know since we've set that out point, it's going to shorten this up. I'm going to right click now on that layer. I'm going to go to time. Enable time remap. So when we add time remapping, you're going to add these keyframes here. And it's going to extend our timeline all the way back out. Um, nothing's really happening. So what's actually, what's actually happening is so you'll notice that the blink will happen. And then it'll be off all the way to the end. Now I want to fix that. So what I'm going to do is I want to control. Hold on control. Go step back a frame to when it's on. Set that keyframe. I'm going to delete the keyframe in front of it. And now it'll stay on to the end. That's what we want. Uh, and then what I want to do is I also want to come in here and I want to go to the first frame and step forward one, set a keyframe and delete the frame. So now it'll dip and then come back up. But we're not done yet, obviously. We want this to blink all the way through. To fix that, let's go ahead and hold down the Alt key or the Option key and let's add another expression to our time remap. This one is a loop out. Okay. Just going to double click. We don't need any parameters for this one. And then I'm just going to go ahead and put a semicolon, click out here. And now we have a blink. And this is a clean and efficient way to get that blink to loop out the entire time. And now we have a nice solid blink. And you know what we could actually do too, because we have the keyframes, I can also do this. Let's drag that out. And now it's slower. So we have ultimate procedural control over this blink. And now I have a security camera shot of what was a colored drone shot of our elf. Thank you so much for watching along, guys. I really enjoy doing these tutorials. If you guys like what you just saw here, let me know in the comments below. Please be sure to like as well as subscribe to this channel as I'm going to be releasing so much more content here in the coming weeks. Till next time, guys, I'll see you in the next video.